Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a country. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times, and you're playing with it. You're listening to The Men's Room. <laughs> Hi, and away we go. Welcome to the show number 2714. Along with Steve the Throw Hill. The Ted Smith. <laughs> Robin Fox. Uh, and my cock. Montgomery. All right, in the metro. On tap today, bring on the bad jokes, bitches. The return of Ted versus the FCC. Get ready to play Profile This. Well, headlines, a men's room shot of the day, fumble listener emails, and everyone's favorite TV time with Ted. Click, clack. Drink any junk. All right, here we go. Woman caught with uh, 1.6 million in drugs after a grenade rolls off her nightstand and explodes. Oh. Meanwhile, a group of senior citizens look to uh, millennial dating slang to try to decipher their codes. Texas obituary contains story of a man rescuing purring kittens from a burning pet store. A mail carrier shocked when a teenager holding his penis opens the door. And Florida mom leaves her three-year-old son at home to go out drinking. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right. We're all familiar with O.J. Simpson. Most of us recognize that he's a murderous a-hole. Most of us accept that. And in spite of getting away with double homicide and doing a few years in prison, O.J. still an unrepentant piece of feces. So it should come as no surprise that his ass was recently banned from the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas. Now, according to them, he got drunk, belligerent, and broke glasses. Just like anybody does when they go to Vegas, except that he's O.J. Simpson. Anyway, it seems that O.J., well, he sucks at the whole freedom thing. You have your freedom, you got away with it, but man, he just does not do a good job. And everybody sucks at something. With O.J., it happens to be freedom. Uh, <laughs> O.J. sucks at freedom. He sucks at freedom. He, he kind of sucks at coexisting in a free society, all right? Is that the more proper way to put it? But uh, then we have this unidentified 36-year-old man from Everett, Washington. Now, we don't know much about this guy, except that he's not a very efficient, uh, very efficient at cunnilingus. He took two gunshots to the head oh. because, according to the prostitute who shot him, he, quote, performed oral sex wrong. You cannot make this up. She admitted that she put two slugs in his head. They asked her what the hell the motive was. And she said, well, I wasn't very good at oral sex. I didn't know how to tell him. So she shot him once in the back of the head, once in the side of the head. And look, I'm not saying that I'm a porn star or anything, but damn, I'd like to think no one's thought of killing me while I'm doing that. But anyway, she said he performed wrong, didn't know how to tell him, puts the slugs in his head, and off he goes. So again, we don't know the full story with that, but with the evidence we have right now, he's not very good at that. OJ sucks at freedom, he sucks at that. We all suck at something. And we all have that moment when we found out that we sucked. So today's question is this. What do you know for a fact that you suck at? And what was the moment you figured it out? Be a part of the big show. Call 844-999. Only you can like the Men's Room on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Men's Room Live. And send your emails to the Men's Room at mensroomlive.com. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Hola, bitches. You're listening to the Men's Room. Hola, bitches. And away we go. Welcome to the show number 2714. With an incredibly large and in charge program we have for you today. Bad jokes on the way right before we drink and toast with a shot of the day. The exciting return today of Ted versus the FCC. As Ted tries to get one back into the win column and again another round coming up of uh, profile this and today we're going to talk about things that you uh, things that you suck at and the moment that you realized you you were you're not as good as you thought or, or maybe you thought you had a, a, a decent chance of perfecting this art but uh, lo and behold you do not mm -hmm. uh, there's all kinds of ways you find that out in uh, in life but uh, yeah some things people just are naturals at 
Uh, others, it's a little bit more work involved. Some people try for a brief amount of time, whether it's to play guitar or to take singing lessons or sports or you name it. I mean, if there's an activity think, that you've always wanted to try, you're going to give it a shot. I think musical instruments probably get the least amount of of practice before people abandon it, right? Because at least in a sport, if it's a team sport, maybe you just enjoy the atmosphere, so you'll keep going. Look, my daughter sucks at soccer. She is the worst thing. I can't even explain what it is that she does when she takes the field. It is so atrocious and bad and offensive to anyone who has any ounce of respect for soccer, but she didn't mind going because mm-hmm. her buddies are on the team. Yeah. Now, you give someone a musical instrument, right? You hand your average person a guitar, and if they cannot play... Christ, if they cannot play everything that Steve Vai can play within a week, they're like, not for me. Yeah, yeah. It's not for me. This, yeah. this, uh, that musical really instrument, mu- right. It's just you. I think people probably stick to the gym longer than they stick with musical instruments. Yeah. Without question. It's, you know what? You can either, you can either kind of figure it out or you're willing to take the time to learn or just, you don't. Nobody's good when they pick it up. Christ. No, you're terrible. Uh, I, we, uh, Steve and I had a, uh, an interesting conversation earlier and this just brought up a memory. I'm not even sure if one correlates to the other, but it just, it, it brought it up with, uh, we're talking about the, uh, the electric, uh, turkey cutter. You know what I mean? Like, oh that, yeah, that back saw. In the day. yeah, yeah, that yeah. saw, all right? And uh, basically, it was just a carver is what they called it, I think. Mm-hmm. Plug the it electric in. turkey carver. And Steve and I both deducted, like, look, man, if you've, if you've gotten to the point on your turkey where it needs to be carved with a chainsaw, you probably cooked that bad boy a little bit too long. It's probably not going to be the best turkey No one is excited to eat that turkey. When, if, if you can't <laughs> cut meat with a knife, like, It's hey, not man. real tender stuff there, <laughs> just man. Just saying, like, <laughs> yeah. mm, like, are those still around? Yes. But they, they are. The same but... person who had theirs in the 1980s still has it. They bring it out one time a year. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, it was like a massive deal. It was yeah, huge. Everybody right. got that electric one. Because it was faster. And then you realize, well, you can carve up the whole turkey, but it's not like you eat the entire turkey. That turkey lasts for days and days. But it's, uh, but, but it. It, but it's just shredding it. And uh, this goes back a few years. But um, and God bless her. Uh, that okay. means something bad. No, no, no. I know this no, is like no, the this, third no, preface no, of this story. It's, no, it's not that. Okay, God bless. So. No one says anything positive about someone when you begin it with, God bless her. Got it. Okay, well, uh, Somebody invites you over for dinner, mm-hmm. and uh, and I was uh, at this point in time, uh, I was kind of well, I was I was in a town by myself. It was one of those deals where, hey, do you want to go over for? And it was Thanksgiving dinner. It was a holiday. That's dinner. always the one, right? and it's because I was working in a small town in Maryland, and you know, I uh, I think at that point my then wife had gone home for Thanksgiving with her family, but I had to work, so right, right. I had to work the Friday after, so whatever. Right. I'm there, and I'd been, we had been as a couple to their house before to eat. All right. Okay. Now the wife is a a, a stay at home mom, and uh, and she cooks constantly for the family. Right? Sure. Problem is, is she was just she the, the food was, was terrible. The food was terrible. The food was <laughs> awful. Right. I mean, it was so dry. It was so bad. It was so bad. Like I was looking at the the two kids, and I was just thinking, oh man, this is. Uh, I know why you're thin. <laughs> no, no, oh, no, 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 man, no. So yeah. Right. So I go over there for Thanksgiving, and the way the deal was, was like he actually had to work before me. Okay. So then I came over like, you know, four hours, four hours later after sure. that fact, and that's when they were going to have the dinner anyway later on this evening, you know, and, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right. So, and it's already uncomfortable because it's basically just me, his wife, and his two kids. At the time, they're like eight and 10. Yeah. All right. And, and she cooked dinner. And I'm telling you, that's that's what brought it up when you said the dry turkey. I I mean, I I swear to God, man, <laughs> it was so bad that it should never have been served, but it was still served. <laughs> and then served. I was kind of like looking around, like, all right, you know, like is is there gravy? And there wasn't any like, can I? How do I? There was no gravy. There was no gravy. So you're she, eating sawdust. She did like a sweet potato thing, which right. was, I don't know how she messed that up, but she messed that up too. The, the whole how's there no gravy? I don't know, man. I, I really do not know. <sighs> I know. She had a I, side I, of pasta. It was more of an Italian home. It just Still, was, I know, I know, and the pasta was bland. It was overcooked. Was, was there no muscle. marinara? It was on the, the the shelves, which were overcooked, and yeah, you know. But the whole thing was just terrible. And I mean, it was, and I love them because they were nice enough to invite me over. And, and maybe I, they hated and you, his, and that's why they invited his, you. His wife is the nicest woman in the world, and he's a very nice guy. But then they would continually ask uh, me over after that to come over for dinner or anything like that. You know, like, you know, my kids love you. My wife loves having you over. Just come over, man. I'll feed you. you know? And I was always like, you know, Randy, I got stuff going on. Man. Like, I'm, he's like, what do you got going on? man? Like, you know, your wife's out of town or whatever, you know, travel all the time. I'm like, I, I, I just, you know, I'm just going to lay out lay low tonight. You know, it was just one of those things where, like, I did not, it, it was, I mean, I could not believe, I just could not, I could not believe 
You know there's a place that we all kind of know here around the area where it's they have food. It just doesn't have really any flavor to it. And yeah. It's very, very – it's just – it's it's nothing. It's like it looks like the food. It's in the shape of the food. You taste the food, and it has no taste to it. Like it wouldn't matter if you got a, uh, a you know like a meatball. Oh. Sa- you know what I'm saying? Like oh it, right. oh what what is yeah, you yeah, follow yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly looks, how yeah. it's described is literally all it is. It yeah. looks. I mean, like it should be good. But it looks normal. Like it's disguised as food that would be good. But then you taste it and realize, like, like it's it, not bad. It's, it's just, just has not no good. taste. Well, this was like that to the level that I'm being bad. Right. So it was just, I don't know. I, I just, for someone who cooked every single day, I mean, she cooked constantly. I mean, this was a big family. Uh, they ate constantly. I mean, I was, my buddy who was, he, he got the lap band surgery, the whole deal. Like oh, jeez. He, he, right. he was a bigger guy, so I know for a fact he loved his wife's cooking, and I, that was even which maybe, I think he got the lap band, so he had an excuse to stop eating it. I mean, that's oh a my funny, God. I just like that. Like, they ate constantly. He had to have a lap band. <laughs> he did. He got the lap band. I mean, let me tell you what, man. I don't know if, I don't know if you know anybody personally who's been through this, and you have to be in close proximity to them. But so he has the surgery, okay? And it's a big deal, man. It's, it's, oh, uh, sure. You have to kind of be, yeah. be ready to do it. You have to diet before you do it. And the most important thing that you need to do is strictly follow the diet After once the you have it. <laughs> yeah. Because the ramifications <laughs> ultimately are horrible. So he goes down this road. He starts like, he eats bags of chips every day, right? <laughs> so he'd bring a bag of uh, Oots potato chips in. Why did he just get the lap band? There, man, and, he, and he'd just eat the whole damn bag of chips while he's sitting there. Now, the studio was very, very small. I don't know if you've ever smelled the ass of a person who has gas, who had gastric bypass surgery. I do not believe I have. It is amazing. <laughs> I mean, it, in a bad way. It is. I cannot believe. You cannot believe what it smells like. It is. I, there's. If I smelled that smell again, you know what I mean? Like, I would know immediately. Someone it has so, gastric bypass. It's so distinctive. <laughs> I mean, it is so distinctively awful. You're saying it is, it it is, is loyal to gastric it, bypass. There's a sting in the back of your nostrils that you will feel when you smell this. It's unbelievable. So, uh, what, do you do, uh, what do you know for a fact that you suck at, and what was the moment you figured that out? But here's the thing. You just went to that whole story, and you never told this woman that her cooking sucks. No, so of course not. I would she never doesn't know that. She sucks. No, 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 no. She, well, and those, she's a great cook. And those people, like, I had a friend growing up that was the same way, right? Now, I always thought his mom's cooking was a little suspect, but they loved it, and it was all they knew. Right. Sure, that's, that's what, yeah. all they know. Yes, exactly. And that was the whole thing. Well, I knew better. <laughs> I knew that was terrible. All right, let's go to, I believe, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. As the story goes, O.J. Simpson should probably just lay low, not attract attention to himself, and enjoy the fact that once again he's a free man. In other words, just act like a normal 70-year-old man. But of course, O.J. is not a normal senior citizen, and he still doesn't have uh, the, the limit or the whatever to not just do stupid things, allegedly. TMZ claims that O.J. was kicked out of the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas on Wednesday night after he got wasted and a little too rowdy. I've been to Vegas numerous times. Uh, probably at least uh, 10. Where in the hell is the Cosmopolitan Hotel? Is that too high end for me, or is that just something I've never heard of? Uh, I don't know if it's too high end, but they even kind of advertise themselves as like, hey, we already know you're in Vegas. We're the hotel you can go to in Vegas, or you can go real Vegas. So, yeah, that, right, so that's to the get whole food, thing. look. So the Cosmopolitan I, Hotel is in Fr- uh, Fremont? I don't know. Okay, uh, right. I think no. it's probably on the strip or somewhere close, but just yeah. understand. You've, you've seen it. Vegas is Vegas, and everyone goes there with the, with the same general ideas as anybody else. And then the Cosmopolitan is still kind of like, look, you can get real Vegas here. We don't care, and, and we're not going to tell anyone. So to get booted out of the Cosmopolitan for being rowdy, I mean, it's that's absolutely – it's like getting booted out of prison because you're too violent. Okay. You know what I mean? It just – like, that's the place there's you a, go there's a, there's to a, act a, like O.J. Simpson. There's a tolerance level in Vegas. It's a little bit different. It's already yeah. high. And then the Cosmopolitan, it's even – look, I've been in a casino where me and this other guy are arguing, and I threatened to murder him in the middle of the casino. And security just said, hey, can you keep it down? I threatened to kill a man, and I got to stay I on at the trip? casino. Uh, no, you were not on the strip. Okay, yeah. good. Thank God. And it was fine. I don't know what – well, I guess the difference is O.J. has killed people, so – 
Maybe yeah. his threats are different. Mm-hmm. I got cut off with the Cosmo. They do. Yeah. Damn, Ted. No, Come you on. did not. Yeah. That's no, you the did place. not. It was just sorry. No way. <laughs> It, in their, oh, come on. In, in the Cosmopolitan's defense. Okay. I'm sure they're justified. Oh, cutting me <laughs> off. Yeah, we were, it was a bachelor party. We had already done the strippers and all that. I, I barely remember being there, but they were like, you fell twice. <laughs> like, okay, you did. It was like the first time. You fell twice? Yeah, they, was like, they were cool about it. He was like, there was two stairs back up to the bar. And <laughs> you fell on the second stair. And the dude was like, I, man, I'm sorry. I, 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 I got it. So got they you. have some lenience there. All yeah. you got to do is be upright. <laughs> right? Basically. They just got to keep upright. <laughs> See, they, Maybe they, they should will have a sign. Cut you off. Just stay upright. <laughs> Please. Twice. Says like, OJ ain't so bad. You got kicked out <laughs> twice? No, I'm saying it was the second fall where they were like, all right. right. Do you remember falling? N- not really. Okay. All right. Do you remember anything else after that uh, incident? <clears throat> the best part was the pictures. <laughs> okay. I had a picture with apparently all my new... <laughs> Pakistani friends. <laughs> How many I have no idea who these men are. How many? <laughs> Five of them. And they were like, yeah, dude, you what bought them it? around the shots. They what bought is, you shots. What is this, the hangover? Yes, but I mean, the picture's awesome. You would think we go way back. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was another picture of a showgirl with her leg stretched up on my shoulder. And I'm like, do you remember that? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> and this all happened after you got kicked out of the Cosmopolitan Hotel. <laughs> well, I think this was all leading up to oh, us getting I kicked see. out. Okay. Oh, by the way, they're saying the Cosmopolitan uh, Cosmopolitan is right next door to the Bellagio. Yeah. So it's right there on the strip. Uh, okay, trust okay. me, I, I for some reason guarantee just, you've seen it. I, I, I just, for whatever reason, I, I haven't really heard it's of it. It's the only before. hotel on the strip with balconies. Apparently, every damn body except us knows Those exactly the where the Cosmo is. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, uh, OJ was kicked out of the Cosmopolitan Hotel, just like Ted, after he got <laughs> wasted and a little too rowdy. They say he had been hitting up the bars at the hotel since his release from prison, and he started arguing with the staff and, quote, broke glasses at the bar. Technically, they don't say whether O.J. broke any of the glasses or not. Security showed up and escorted him out, and he did leave without causing a scene. But he has been permanently 86 now from the Cosmopolitan Damn. from whatever went down. For what it's worth, O.J.'s lawyer admits that he was banned from the hotel but denies that he did anything wrong. He says they just decided they didn't want to have to have him around anymore, causing such a, uh, a ruckus. I'm sure there's no videotape of, from the inside of a casino in Vegas, right? Yeah. I also like that. It's like, oh, he was pretty rowdy. Security showed up. Then he's like, oh, yeah, okay, no problem. I'll leave. <laughs> yeah. Plus, well, I mean, he's going to go back to jail. You think so? I do. What, what, what charge do you think they hit him with? Right? He got away with the big one. Well, first of all, he's not even supposed to be drinking because he's on parole. So you can't drink if you're on parole? It depends I mean, on your... But I'm pretty sure his, he, he's not allowed to have alcohol or drugs. I would imagine so, he's kind of a mean drunk. I would, wouldn't, wouldn't I just assume that once you've done your time, you, you still have to kind of check in? I mean, like, yeah, if you, I, and I don't know. I mean, I know what it... Well, keep in mind, he was released early. Right. Oh, so that's he he's on parole. Okay. So right. He didn't serve his full term. If you serve your full term, I think... Then you're, you're scot-free. You walk you're, out. You're paid your you do whatever you can. In this case, hey, man, we've let you out. Uh, you know, so for this much longer, you got to be on so your best you behavior. So you just have to. But O.J. Simpson doesn't have a best behavior. There is no best no, behavior. No, he got away with, with murder. That's what I'm saying. Like, a double he's murder. Gonna screw, he's going to do something again. Like, hey, I don't see him lasting too long on the outside. Yeah, but could you imagine being up to no good or whatever you've been doing for your life? And then the moment that you get out of jail, the place that you choose to live is Las Vegas, Nevada. Of all in the, the places, middle of the strip. Of all the places. Yeah, right. Of all the places that you could go to get into trouble. Like if you said, uh, hey, Lamar Odom, we know you've got some problems with substance abuse, whatever your deal is. There's a rehab place, but it's outpatient that we want to send you to on the strip in Las Vegas, and you can stay there. Doesn't he stay in Vegas? Well, that's what I mean. I think like, that's part of his like, problem. Well, that, that, that's what I mean. Or it, South Beach in Miami. It's like, look, if, if, you're, if, you're, uh, if you have problems with addiction, cocaine, whatever, maybe Miami's not the right place for you. Or Vegas. Or New Orleans or wherever you can party all night or Vegas. Or Where would you time. send him? Like if you say, you got to pick a city. I would send him to some place in Utah. Fargo. You t- maybe- no, because Fargo they throw down, man, because of all the fracking and the natural gas up there. Oh, so right. There's a bunch so of bars. There's a bunch right. of dudes. He's all not right. going to get laid, but he's going to be able to just get absolutely I'll take hammered. OJ get laid if he wants to get I'm laid. telling you, someplace in Utah. That's where I would think. Send- my, if my kid, uh, yeah. See, dude, I don't I've, know, man, because I've Utah. I've been to Utah. It's a wash in cocaine. It's a Washington. <laughs> oh, everybody's on it. Down I right. don't trust anywhere that pretends <laughs> it's that conservative. Yeah. That tells me, like, the porn they watch the stuff that would make your eyeballs bleed. Like, I think they are dirty and up to no good because they try too hard to pretend they're not. You know what I mean? I'm like, man, I feel like that's a cover-up in Utah. Hmm. 
They're very nice. I think they're very nice, but so was Jeffrey Dahmer, according to me. You know, he volunteered at the Wyoming? school for the blind. He ate people. Maybe Wyoming. Mm, no. I no, like what, Wyoming, no. dude. It's going to be a man's man out there. Yeah, there are a lot. Drink like... some Jack Daniels, son. Okay. Well, I mean, look, if you're really, I mean, that's why you got to go to a rehab thing and stay in the rehab. Yeah, but like, cause, I mean, there's alcohol everywhere. It just seems like there's there is, but I just feel like it just like I don't know. it just seems like with Vegas, like there's this neighborhood and like OJ lives there and Pete Rose lives there and Ugh. it's like you know what I'm saying, like Jose Canseco lives there, <laughs> yeah, like and Steven, that- Se- Steven Seagal lives there, and like you yeah. know what I, you know what I'm saying, like just one right, of the those, worst. It was just one of those places where you're like, oh my god, you know? Like, yeah, OJ going to Vegas seems like Vince a bad Neal idea. lives there, <sighs> the, the whole group of them, <laughs> Nick Cage, <laughs> Joe Perry, <laughs> sure, exactly. <laughs> what do you uh, what do you know for a fact that you suck at and what was the moment you figured that out 844-999 Ola calls on the way you are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network Welcome back to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill Get ready, return of Ted versus the FCC on the way. Our question, what did you know for a fact that you suck at? And what was the moment you figured that out? 844-999. Ola, here come the comments. Uh, yeah, one of the stories that inspired today's question, probably the lesser of the two stories about O.J. Simpson. We haven't got to the good one yet. Whew, it's uh, That's a different kind of story. But uh, O.J., he gets permanently 86 from the Cosmopolitan Hotel on the Las Vegas Strip. And we were saying, like, man, you know, just based on O.J., and how lucky that mofo's been to escape what he truly deserves. Why would you go to Las Vegas? Like, that place basically just begs for you to get into trouble, right? So it says luck. Uh, he can't leave the state as part of his parole, so he's stuck in Nevada. Where else would you want to be other than Las Vegas? Okay. So that's one. And then another one comes in. We said as far as drinking and uh, whatever his per- uh, parole violations might be, it says OJ can't blow more than a point zero eight, so he can drink within reason. He can't go over the legal limit, but... Okay. As long as he's, that explains it. So if someone rolls up to him with a breathalyzer and they're uh, a fed, he could go back to jail. Would you want to be that guy? Or a state uh, prison guy or whatever. That. Okay, uh, fair enough. All right, our question today, uh, what do you know for a fact that you suck at, and what was the moment you figured that out? This is the story that brought us to the question today, and it's a doozy. I think that um, as far as the world of uh, what guys tend to talk about that they think that they're better at than mm-hmm. most people, it's a pretty universal thing. Every guy's going to tell you he's great. Yeah, and uh, Mm -hmm. for whatever reason, they... You know, whether they've been told that or not, or they just believe that, it, it's kind of hard but to, to, know, to really know because it, you're not the one enjoying it for the most part. Right. So, you, I mean, how. You might enjoy doing it, but you don't know if you're any good at it. Right, that's, that's exactly it. But I think that, uh, you know, a, a collegiate effort, you know, like people try to give it their best try, you know what I mean? They're, Absolutely. This guy, however, yeah. uh, it was made clear he's not good at this. And this is a, uh, this is a disturbing story uh, all the way around, trust you. A uh, 36 year old man was left for dead in his home for three days. Until police found him with two gunshots to his head last month. Now a escort is in jail on one million bail after being captured at the man's home surveillance footage the night that he was shot. And then it gets a little bit more bizarre. Marissa Whalen uh, was arrested and is being investigated on first degree assault, first degree identity theft and first degree robbery. Everett uh, police say she spent more than ten thousand dollars of the victim's credit cards. The victim, uh, their employer, called police concerned that the victim had uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically not logged on for work that day. I guess this person worked from home. Mm-hmm. It's been a few days. What do he works for? His uh, mother also called nine one one with concerns. Officers found no signs of forced entry at the home, and no one answered the door. An officer checked the inside of the house and found the man sitting up against a wall in the master bedroom with dried blood on his head. He was awake, but unresponsive to questions, according to the incident. Jesus. Medics took him to a medical center where a CT scan revealed he had two bullets inside of his head. Damn. Cops served a search warrant. So he was alive for those three days. Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez, man. I did not realize that part. Yeah, I thought they were saying he died, and for three days his body was in his room. He was alive for three days after taking two bullets to the head. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, wait, there's there's more. Jesus. Our question, what do you know for a fact that you suck at, and what was the moment you figured that out? 844-999-OLA. OLA, the shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.